<laughs> I mean, it's funny you say that because I kind of feel the same way about stand up. And I like I've I guess the only time I've paid for it is when I took Jason to see Joe Rogan as a joke. <laughs> And then it wasn't. It wasn't funny. It cost me three hundred large, and it wasn't <laughs> funny at all. It wasn't funny as a right, joke, right. and he wasn't funny as a comedian. So it was a very confusing kind of uh, expenditure. It just stopped being funny the second I had to put my cell phone in a lockbox, <laughs> yeah. and I was like, "Oh, this! I'm already out." Yeah, because you were gonna play Wordle. You were gonna play Wordle. <laughs> I was like, "Let's go check out what this popular podcaster has going on." You know, when he touches the stage. And I have to say, it was I, I. Jason knew. Jason keeps up with the stuff a little more than me, so he knew what we were getting into. And the the look on his face when I was like five minutes and I was like, "Let's leave, dude. This is insane. Like, it's not." I I just assumed <laughs> there would be some jokes in there, but there weren't any jokes. I I kept looking. And I didn't see them. I didn't hear them. Now I'm sorry. Was he doing stand up or was he doing a live thing of his podcast? No, this was this was stand up. This was stand up oh, at yeah. the at the fabulous Fox Theater, sold out multiple nights in a row. Crazy. Crazy. And uh, Fitzsimmons opened for him, and he kind of did his like racist fifteen, and then <laughs> Greg Fitzsimmons. Yeah, Greg Fitzsimmons. Yeah, he's not. He doesn't do racist <laughs> yeah. stuff. Honey, does he? It was no. like I, It wasn't. No. He wasn't doing racist <laughs> stuff, but he was. I mean, anyone who opens for uh, Joe Rogan or somebody like him panders to the the Blue Lives Matter crowd. You know. Well, that's a that's a bummer. Uh, yeah, of course. I like Greg. I, I I know Greg. I like him. He's a legend. He's a legend. I don't think he's a racist guy, but he's you know he's old enough to make a couple you know Asian jokes or whatever here and there, where it's on the borderline. You know what I mean? But right. yeah, when Joe went up, he's just kind of like saying like profound sentences, and the crowd just like stands up and is like, "Now wait, wait, <laughs> you know, like, have you guys seen the uh, the uh, Tim Heidecker Joe Rogan spoof? Yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's so yeah. good." <laughs> It's so fucking good. And it's one of those, it's like performance pieces where the, it's like funny, then it's not funny, then it's really funny, then it's not funny again, then it's mm -hmm. even crazier funny. It's just three, it's, it's just brilliant. Yeah. If you hold on for the whole entire ride, it takes you into a dark, deep place, but it's rewarding yeah. for sure. It's great. It's really great. I guess I just expected, I, I understand that for comedians, podcasting is obviously a big money maker but it also sells tickets you know what i mean like that's the, once you sure. have a giant yeah, yeah. audience they're yeah. going to come see you no matter what but i assumed after years of uh stand up and and other assorted you know um mma hosting gigs that we would get a few jokes in there but it but it wasn't even it wasn't even like it was like there weren't like Jason saying it was just kind of like statements. Like it wasn't even like there were no there were it was no just like, like trans people shouldn't swim, you know, stuff like that. And it's like it's whoo, just whoo, like that's whoo, like, you know that's literally what it was like. Like if you want to talk about like trans people <laughs> athletes, like there's comedy to be mined in there. It's tricky there to make none, a joke that works. Zero, no and it has to be a home run. Yeah. But he was he was just saying like it's freaking messed up. That fucking <laughs> Trans dude weightlifting is fucking bullshit, dude. And then a guy who has like a lariat F three fifty is like <laughs> <laughs> the thing about it. The worst part about it was his looks for me. Like I was stunned at the meatball vibe that was like emanating from him from the stage. But also, David, you'll know this because you're from the south. Uh, that like it's a certain kind of like there's people in the south that make a lot of money as like builders. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that, that I developed this neighborhood out in Austell. I'm a fucking low, low millionaire. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm a very successful hauling company. We do boats and stuff mostly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They haul. They yeah. haul. Me and my, me and my chick. I'm gonna. I'll leave my. I'll leave my gun in the glove box. But we're gonna valet the lariat, <laughs> and we're gonna go see our guy Joe tonight downtown in the city. And it's like, that's the crowd. It's like guys with money that made it doing the least sexy things on earth <laughs> and the women that love them. That was the crowd. That was the crowd. <laughs> that's a great name for the tour. Little wordy, but yeah, we're there. <laughs> but it's like, I. But dude, I know that. I know exactly. That's a, that's a, yeah. a really precise, uh, specific picture you're painting. And I know it completely. I don't think that's necessarily just the South, too. I think it's, uh, it's yeah, not. But it's, it's I not. know exactly what you're talking no, about. It's a, me, me growing up in Orange County, California, that's why Chris and I are so close. Same that's shit. like the rich guy where I grew up was like, yeah, yeah. My, I, I like redo roofs. 
for track houses and I have, you know, I make 1.2 million a year and uh, everyone's like, oh, fuck, this guy's I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing walk. pretty good. Yeah. You should see the fucking crossbows I hunt with. These aren't cheap. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like a, it was nice to be there with Jason because I think it was like exposing him to a side of the South that is, you kind of have to live there to truly understand or have, have lived there at some point where it's like, this is the act actual population mm -hmm. and i was i was also trying to explain to him that a lot of these people i don't even think they're necessarily like i don't think they're even racist necessarily no. i just think they're kind of like d dumb yeah i don't think they're uh i don't think they're necessarily racist at all i mean there's plenty of racists in the south but the guy you're describing is i think somewhat uh uh, uh i wouldn't say dumb as much as confused i think because they have these like okay libertarian ideals but libertarianism, yeah. the philosophy of it uh, just crumbles when you apply any kind of real world logic to it. <laughs> and and there's no, you know, and they're like easy to, to, to talk to and hang out with uh, and they'll listen to you. But they just they don't have a lot of answers for things, you know, when you mm -hmm. you know what I mean? When you're like, well, that's not necessarily yeah. true. What about this? And and they <laughs> they just want to be left alone and. <laughs> want to live their life and we got it good and i don't want don't to ask me nothing too hard all right y'all <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately though unfortunately they do have it good that's the thing that I, that's the problem i'm like all right this guy's rich he's like has a giant house he's got all the toys if you want to live like that then you got it pretty good yeah, if, that's, a, if you want to be oblivious sense. to the world around you in a relative sense yeah, they yeah got in it a good. relative they're, sense they're taking the they're getting on the carnival cruise line you know once every 18 months and they go <laughs> to Honduras. They don't really see Honduras. They, <laughs> they smell some air. They smell some of the air in Honduras. And um, That's nice know. air. Good air. I tried a mango, y'all. It was really good. <laughs> but, yeah, I know, I know that guy so well. I know that person you're describing very, very well. Yeah, as do I.